Hello everyone, welcome to Mark One Design EMC channel. Last time we talked about how to set up a radiated immunity test using a, a very low cost um, antenna like this. Um, in the test setup, we injected high frequency noise into this antenna, pointing this antenna to the DUT, and we created some immunity failures of a product. Another very popular immunity test is what we call bow current injection method. In a way, bow current injection method, also known as the BCI test, is very similar to, to uh, radiated immunity tests using an antenna. Uh, the methodology is very similar. You still need pretty much the same setup as the, the setup we did last time. However, rather than using an antenna, we can use a current clamp and put the current clamp on the cable. By doing so, we injected high frequency noise uh, directly on the cable to create some uh, noise, hopefully to see if the unit can uh, you know, withstand uh, the noise. So in today's session, we are going to look at how to set up a BCI test using, again, very simple low-cost setup uh, to reproduce some of the immunity failures we've seen in a, in a proper EMC test lab. So let's start. Okay, here's the setup. As you can see, pretty much the same as last time. We have a DUT, which we covered for confidentiality uh, reason. We have uh, a current clamp, same as last time, frequency band up to 800 megahertz um, to pick up the um, RF noise on the cable. This is a current clamp, a homemade current clamp. As you can see, in terms of size, it is much bigger than this commercial one. The reason for that is the commercial one is really designed to pick up noise rather than injecting noise. To inject noise, you have to make sure that the core like this is big enough so the core is not saturated. And the, the, manif the making of this uh, um, you know, injection probe is actually very easy and simple. You can find all the details in, on my website, site. there's an article talking about it. But just on the look at it, it's just, a, you know, a, I don't know, seven or eight turns of cables going through this uh, ferrite core. The core type is 28 material from um, layered, I believe. And then you have something uh, like a connector like this, and then yeah, you powered up or driven by the same um, uh, RF amplifier tech box um, TBM DA3, which is capable of a frequency range between 10 megahertz and 1 gigahertz. Um, difference with last time, as you can see here, we are actually driving the RF amplifier using a, a, a function generator. Um, the reason being is that last time people ask, oh, can I use a, a function generator to do the job? And I said, of course you can. But the trick is um, you need to set up um, the amplitude of the signal to be the right level. Otherwise, any level higher than the rated uh, 3 dBm would potentially um, damage this device. So for, for instance, in this case, I'm, I'm injecting a sinusoidal waveform with the peak-to-peak -peak voltage of 600 millivolts. And I am doing a sweep, basically sweeping from 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Um, and the other channel I'm connecting to uh, the oscilloscope, as you can see, it's 600 millivolts peak-to-peak. -peak. Make sure that you, know, you don't inject any signal um, larger than this and then it's sweeping, sweep, sweeping between 100 megahertz and 200 megahertz. Um, here again, very similar, we have the listen, we have the power supply unit, and we have a, a monitor to monitor the flow rate because now we haven't turned the unit up, uh, to turn the unit on, so it's still uh, zero. Um, another thing I want to mention is for this test, I have uh, a few ferrite cores clamped to this cable. The reason being is that um, you don't want noise to go this direction so as to affect your reading. We really wanted to see how noise has have an impact on the DUT self rather than on this, uh, on this uh, device here. So we often put 
uh, many ferrite cores, make sure that the ferrite cores work in different frequency range. So in this case, for instance, this is a 3-1 material, this is 61 material, this is 44 material. They work in different frequency range. So any noise potentially travel on in, in this direction will be reflected back. So what we measure is really the, the RF noise goes into the unit itself. So without further ado, let's start. First, we start the um, device on the test. As you can see, we should, uh, yeah, we now we see flow reading uh, working normally, you know, and then the minute I turned on uh, the amplifier, as you can see, the flow rate jumps to a very high level, which is abnormal, and then you have the overflow error. So that clearly indicates this unit has some immunity issue. Uh, in a frequency range of 100 megahertz and 200 megahertz at least. And let's have a closer look at what we uh, see here. Here, as you can see, in order to protect the RF input of the uh, spectrum analyzer, I put a 20 dB attenuator. And as you can see here, we are measuring the noise and you can see clearly the noise starting from 100 megahertz and slowly die off and to the, to the end. Here is a little bit harmonics of the signal we created. So we can see that the highest level is about 87 or let's say 80 dB microvolts. So this test setup is very neat in the sense that 20 dB attenuator, then we have 20 dB ohm roughly of this um, current probe. So what you read here actually is roughly the value of of the current we've seen. So in this sense, 80 dB microamps. The calculation is simple. You got 80 dB microvolts reading from here, but you need to add 20 dB attenuator effect. So that's 100 dB microvolts reading, let's just say. But then again, this current probe has 20 dB ohm. So minus 20 dB ohm, you get 80. So that's why this setup is quite neat. What we see here roughly is the current RF current measure on the cable. Um, you can clearly see everything going on here. Uh, of course, the oscilloscope in this case is just to, to make sure that you, 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 you monitor uh, the input to your RF amplifier. Make sure that what you get to the RF amplifier not exceeds the rated power, which is 3 dBm uh, maximum. So as you can see, I set the peak-to-peak uh, -peak voltage to be 600 millivolts. Make sure um, the RF input of this unit is uh, well protected. Um, and I think that's everything. Okay, so in summary, to set up a low-cost BCI test in your workplace, you really just need a few things, which is uh, a homemade uh, bulk current injection probe, uh, an RF amplifier, which is capable uh, of uh, injecting noise in the frequency range of interest, and um, some spec uh, a spectral analyzer to monitor the, the RF current on the, on the cable, and that's it. Um, there were a few remarks on this test method. First is, as you can see, the maximum uh, RF current we, we can inject is about, I would say, 80 to 90 dB microamps which is often sufficient enough for, uh, for a pre-compliance uh, BCI test. The other thing is the TechBox RF amplifier we use, you make sure that the RF input needs to be uh, protected. So if you're using a function generator like, like we did this time, make sure that the amplitude of the signal you inject should be within the uh, limit. So in this case, 600 millivolts peak to peak don't exceed that. Um, and yeah, once we, um, we, we, we recreate or we reproduce the failure that we have seen in the proper test setup, then we can um, use our magic to fix the product. So in this case, actually we have another sample that where we fix the problem, we put it back in, we do exactly the same test and problem just gone. Um, the the uh, reading just absolutely perfect with, without any issue, even we injected uh, high frequency noise on the line. So if you like this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel or share it with your colleagues. And thank you for watching, thanks.